Welcome to BioPal's educational web series. This webisode is designed to introduce BioPal's inulin and iohexol fit GFR kits to the research community. These immunoassay kits are designed to measure the concentration of either inulin or iohexol in collected blood or urine samples to obtain an accurate measurement of glomerular filtration rate. The direct measurement of GFR remains the gold standard for assessing renal function. The diagnostic procedure to accurately measure GFR is simple and straightforward, requiring the administration of an ideal filtration marker, followed by the withdrawal of time blood samples or time blood and urine collections. An ideal filtration marker is a reagent that is freely filtered at the glomerulus, is not bound to plasma proteins, is not reabsorbed, secreted, or metabolized by the tubules, is non-toxic, and is physiologically inert. Therefore, the kinetic clearance of a filtration marker is only influenced by a change in kidney function and will always provide the correct GFR value. Inulin, a polymer isolated from plants, is a classic filtration marker. However, most diagnostic contrast media also meet these criteria, including iohexol, a clinically available CT contrast reagent. For your convenience, BioPal provides a kit worksheet and checklist for both the inulin and iohexol fit GFR kits, which are available as PDFs on our website. Simply open your browser, click the toolbar, and type in biopal.com, then hit enter. This will bring you to BioPal's homepage. From here, scroll down and click Kidney Diagnostics. The following page is where you will find the PDF files previously mentioned. Scroll down until you see Fit GFR Test Kit for Inulin. Here is where you will find the links to each PDF, the manual, and the worksheet and checklist. This worksheet is designed to help organize your thoughts and aid you during the analytical procedure, in addition to providing a record of your data. The first two pages of the worksheet are a step-by-step -step procedure for running the kit. Helpful inputs on the first page of the worksheet provide a means to document the procedure, such as the technician's name and date of the assay. In the middle of the page are inputs to record the lot number for each component of the kit. The third page provides a schematic of the plate wherein you can document the placement of each sample. The fourth page provides a detailed description of the procedure to generate the standards for the assay. Each kit contains eight components. One kit manual, one bottle of goat anti-rabbit IgG HRP, one bottle of HRP substrate reagent, one bottle of HRP stop reagent, two plate sealers, one 96-well probe coated plate, which will either be inulin or iohexol, one bottle of rabbit anti-probe, which will be either inulin or iohexol, and one bottle of probe standard concentrate, which will again either be inulin or iohexol. Two additional reagents that are needed but not provided in the kit are standard and sample diluent and wash buffer. However, the recipe to make these two reagents is provided within the kit manual, which will allow you to prepare them in-house. These can also be ordered separately as ready-to-use reagents from BioPal. Pricing information for these two components is posted on our website. Additionally, all components should be refrigerated until you run the assay, whereby all reagents should then be brought to room temperature before use. One benefit of the immunoassay is that no elaborate sample purification steps are required. However, due to the high concentration of the filtration marker in the samples, each will require dilution with sample diluent prior to analysis. The suggested dose for the measurement of GFR in both kits is 0.1 milliliter per kilogram at a concentration of 10 milligrams of the probe per milliliter. Based upon this dosage, the suggested dilution is 1 to 100 for blood samples, serum, or plasma, and is 1 to 1,000 for urine samples. When running the assay in duplicate, you will need a total of 100 microliters of diluted sample. As a result, only 10 microliters of undiluted sample is normally required. For example, if you add 10 microliters of sample to 990 microliters of diluent, you will obtain 1,000 microliters of diluted sample for analysis. Overall, this analytical method provides flexibility in terms of experimental design, given that the dilution level is directly proportional to the dose. Researchers are free to vary these parameters to meet the objectives of the study. Be aware that different species will have different normal rates of clearance, and as a result, the required dose and dilution can vary. Therefore, BioPal strongly advises researchers to perform a pilot study in order to determine the ideal dose and dilution range for their experimental model. We will now prepare the standards using the last page of the worksheet, which provides a step-by-step -step procedure. 
First, label seven test tubes as shown in the diagram and rack them accordingly, leaving a large space between test tube B and G. Next, accurately pipette 1800 microliters of standard diluent into test tube H, 700 microliters into test tube G, and 900 microliters into the remaining tubes. Make sure to practice good laboratory technique by using accurately calibrated pipettes and replacing the tip during each transfer to avoid contamination. Now, withdraw 200 microliters of the standard concentrate and add it to test tube H, then Vortex to mix. Next, remove 100 microliters of the well-mixed solution and add it to test tube F, then Vortex to mix. Repeat this method up to test tube B as shown in the worksheet diagram. Now, withdraw 300 microliters of solution from test tube H and add it to test tube G. Next, remove 100 microliters of the well-mixed solution and add it to test tube E followed by repeating the same for test tube C and making sure to vortex following each transfer. After mixing is complete, reorganize the test tubes in alphabetical order. Your standards are now prepared and conveniently organized for the assay. Now that samples have been diluted and standards prepared, you are now ready to start the ELISA procedure. Draw out the design of your plate using the schematic provided on the third page of the worksheet. After organizing, remove the plate from the plastic envelope and make sure the removable rows are firmly in place. Based on the schematic diagram, pipette 50 microliters of standard diluent into well A1 and A2 to serve as blanks. Once again, make sure to practice good laboratory technique by using accurately calibrated pipettes. Do not submerge the pipette tip into the samples, but place it only deep enough to require the 50 microliter volume. Transfer the volume to the designated well by inserting the pipette tip into the lower corner. Make sure to use a fresh pipette tip for the next sample. After placing the blanks, begin pipetting the standards starting with test tube B. When you have completed plating out all the standards, the first two columns of the plate will be filled. Now begin plating out your samples in duplicate as outlined on your schematic. After all wells have been filled with sample, it is time to add the rabbit antiprobe. If you are running the inulin kit, the label on the bottle will read, rabbit anti-inulin. If you are running the iohexol kit, the label on the bottle will read, rabbit anti-iohexol. For this application, it is best to use a calibrated single channel repeating pipette set to release 50 microliters. To prevent cross-contamination, the pipette tip should be placed at the top of each well and should never come in contact with the sample. Once all wells are filled, use a plate sealer to cover the plate and carefully rub it to make sure it adheres to the plate. Then, place the covered plate on an orbital shaker at a speed of 500 and allow the plate to incubate for one hour. These parameters may vary based upon your equipment. After incubation, carefully remove the plate sealer and place the plate onto the rack of an automated plate washer. Program your equipment to wash and aspirate with 350 microliters of wash buffer per well. Repeat for a total cycle of three washes and aspirations. When complete, the plate should appear dry. After washing and aspirating the plate, it is time to add the GOAT Anti-Rabbit IgG HRP to each well. Once again, use a calibrated single channel repeating pipette, this time set to release 100 microliters. Don't forget to place the tip at the top of each well to avoid cross-contamination. After all wells have been filled, use the second plate sealer to cover the plate and place it on an orbital shaker at a speed of 500, allowing the plate to incubate for 30 minutes. Following incubation, carefully remove the plate sealer and place the plate onto the rack of an automated plate washer. Use the same method as previously mentioned and make sure the plate is dry following the wash cycle. Now it is time to add the HRP substrate reagent. Inspect the reagent to be sure it is colorless. If the solution is dark blue, the reagent is contaminated and will not work. Using a calibrated single channel repeating pipette, add 100 microliters of HRP substrate reagent to each well, once again making sure to place the tip at the top of each well. After adding the reagent, allow the plate to incubate without shaking for 30 minutes. As time begins to pass, you will notice that there is a gradation in color for the calibration standards. If there is no probe presence in the sample, a deep blue color will begin to form. If the concentration of the probe in the sample is too high, it will remain clear with no blue coloring. 
As a result, wells B1 and B2 show the darkest blue, and wells H1 and H2 are the lightest blue. Wells A1 and A2 are clear because no rabbit antiprobe or goat anti-rabbit IgG HRP were added to these two wells. As the plate develops, examine your unknown samples. In terms of color, all samples should appear to fall between B1 and B2 and H1 and H2. Make sure to document all useful observations on the schematic of your worksheet. Following the incubation period, use a calibrated single channel repeating pipette and add 100 microliters of HRP stop reagent to each well, once again placing the tip at the top of each well. Once the reagent is added to the well, the color will turn from blue to yellow. The intensity of the yellow should be directly proportional to that of the blue. Using a plate reader, we will now read the plate. Your equipment should be set to read 450 nanometers. Most software packages will have a four parameter curve fit option available, which should be used to fit the sigmoidal shaped curve. Moreover, most packages will also automatically convert the OD readings of each sample to its corresponding probe concentration based upon the limits of the curve fit. However, you will most likely need to correct the values for the dilution rate. For example, if your plate reader provides a calculated reading of 0.15 micrograms per milliliter and the dilution rate for that sample was 1 to 100, then the true concentration of your sample is 15 micrograms of the probe per milliliter. This now concludes BioPal's Inulin and Iohexol Fit GFR Kit tutorial. If you have any other questions regarding the kit, feel free to contact BioPal by locating our information on the website.